like the transition music. It feels very special to be up here. Um, I'm John Zanos. As uh, Rude mentioned, I am with Canonical as well as on the OpenStack board of directors with Monty. And I feel uh, very honored to be here today for a couple of reasons. Um, one, you guys should be very proud. I just came from the Silicon Valley version of this. And there were 600, 700 people in a venue very much like this. And I think, talking to Rude and Fairbanks, you guys are somewhere behind 500, 600. If more people come through the door today, 700. So I think that's a huge accomplishment in the Netherlands to have the same sort of intensity and involvement around OpenStack that you get in the heart of Silicon Valley. So I think you all deserve a big clap. And a special thanks to Fairbanks. I know they've coordinated this. They're partners of ours. Uh, we've been working with them on a number of things around OpenStack. And uh, again, very excited to be here and to have an opportunity to talk to you all. Um, we're going to do a couple things, and hopefully you'll bear with me. Uh, for those of you that have done anything in OpenStack, you know Canonical, we love to do love live demos. And I will do a live demo, for better or worse. Um, we will, I'll walk through some slides, because we all have slides, but I'll try to make it somewhat interactive back and forth from the demo. Uh, in addition, we're going to have a special guest star from Seesaw, who is actually a solution provider in the Netherlands who's bringing forward an OpenStack cloud uh, solution for the Netherlands. So to bring something local as well as something broad from our perspective as Canonical, being one of the companies in OpenStack for as long as it's been around. Um, I'm going to try to walk you through three things. A kind of broad view of the future, because we're open source and we have to talk about the future. I'm going to talk about the strategy and what we're trying to do, both as a group of people in this foundation around OpenStack, as well as the marketplace. And then I think we're going to try to end by giving real examples about how do you bring this into production? How do we all make money doing this? Because while there's an open source element of this, open source in its best form is driving business value. Business value drives money, drives people. We all stay interested. We have jobs. We feed our families. Everything is good. So we'll try to hit all those themes today, which um, should be fun. So a little bit about open source and the strategy. For those of you that know this quote from Mark Anderson, famously in 2001, it was his introduction to software ruling the world. The point being that software is equally important to Airbnb and Uber and HP as it is to Boeing, uh, you know, Boeing, government agencies, banking industry, uh, and I think the market has evolved to prove that. I would add my adjunct to that, which is that not only just software in general, but open source specifically, as Allison pointed out, that innovation engine is really driving a new thinking. You know, sometimes it's a complete open source model like OpenStack. Sometimes it's open source inside wrapped around some proprietary software that we see in as a service from companies like Uber, et cetera. Uh, sometimes it's hybrid models like big companies like HP, which I always love to see talking about open source because obviously their pedigrees come from the commercial side of the business. So that's a reality in the marketplace we live in today. But what's also a reality is there is only one cloud. It is the hybrid cloud. Uh, I personally feel very strongly about this that in about a year or so, there will not be discussion of public clouds and private clouds and hybrid cloud and my cloud and your cloud. There will be a discussion of the cloud. The cloud will look something like this. There'll be a single control plane that helps you manage it to drive workloads where they should belong. Maybe in development on a public cloud, maybe in early production on a private cloud on-prem, ultimately maybe fully optimized to be on a private bare metal solution to get all the efficiencies you can squeeze out of every penny. At the same time, that will lend itself to making sure the right workload resides in the right spot. The other variable that will be very important in this is data residing where you want it. 
You know, what I think is really fascinating about Europe is the EU culture, which is simply put, I may need to keep data in the Netherlands, and I may do a lot of work for a company in Germany, but that data may need to stay in Germany. And some other data may be okay to reside in some public cloud that sits in Seattle or Shenzhen or wherever. This is going to be the cloud that we need to manage in the future. Is OpenStack relevant there? Absolutely. Are containers relevant there? Absolutely. Are containers without OpenStack relevant there? Absolutely. Are public clouds like Azure and Amazon relevant in that? Absolutely. It's a frickin' complex world, but it'll present lots of opportunity for us, and I think it'll be driven by those of us that are able to talk to customers and say, tell me about your workload. What are you trying to do? Why are you doing that? And where is the data? and what's important about the data. And I expect there'll be a lot of our customers and partners that will say, my data is my company. I lose my data, I don't have a company. You know where I want that? I want that in my bedroom, right next to my wife. Actually, in between me and my wife. I want it right there. <laughs> you know, that's going to be important. So this is the world we live in. Software matters. The cloud is complex. So how do we? Um, help our customers and partners. We, we say a couple things that are really important. First of all, in this world, innovation is paramount. If you do not innovate, you will perish. If you do not innovate quickly, you will lose market share. If you let somebody innovate a little bit more quickly, you may only be relevant this year, not next year. This is a tough environment, and I'll talk a little bit uh, for a particular use case, the telecom space, where they're feeling this quite intimately in terms of how they have to compete with companies that don't have the legacy they have, like Google and Facebook. Um, but how do you survive in that world that innovation is important? You automate. Less people doing a lot more stuff. And I'll use some examples. The other thing is you have to simplify. Automating complexity is a long, long day. Automating simplicity is actually something you may accomplish. How you get there is going to be the trick. And, and really, I think the market, as we've all seen, is very unforgiving. Those companies that can't bring themselves forward in this world, you know, a cl classic example is what happened to the poor taxi industry by Uber, what's on the verge of happening to the poor auto industry, where you see Google and Apple talking about not just making the software for cars, but maybe we should actually make the car that drives itself. You know, these are very, very big innovations. So I'm going to show you a little bit on how we're trying to simplify op op OpenStack, how we're going to automate OpenStack. And what I'm going to do is hopefully deploy an 11-node OpenStack cloud in the course of my 25 minutes left. So this is a tool we call Autopilot. At the end of the day, its relevance is it abstracts and simplifies de deploying OpenStack. This sits live in a lab, so if it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. Um, I'm going to configure. I'm going to make some decisions. It's going to take a moment to come up. Can I pick? I will want to pick KVM. Ultimately, we'll have more choices. This is a beta version. We are going to be announcing uh, the full GA version in Tokyo. I'm going to pick Open vSwitch, but ultimately, we have multiple SDNs, which I'll talk about. Object storage being Ceph. Block storage, I'll just make Ceph because it makes it easy. Um, I'm going to select some hardware, save the selection. Here's a handful of nodes. I'm going to add another availability zone another handful of nodes, save this selection, and now I'm going to install. All right, and now, OK, we'll wait 20 minutes. So back to the presentation, we'll check in every so often. But that right there basically was the configuration steps to get to an 11-node cloud uh, sitting in a data center uh, somewhere in the US. And simply put, this morning I did that four times, so I deployed four clouds, tore them down, put them back together. Um, and you usually don't want me doing that for you. Um, so 
while that's running, at the end of the day, what we're trying to accomplish with OpenStack, because I think the opportunity of OpenStack is only accomplished if we make it production ready, as everybody's talked about, and production ready is not painful. So our real goal here is trying to convert the deployment of OpenStack from months and weeks into minutes, um, and hopefully it'll work, um, and I know it will. So why is this important? Because when we talk to customers, we view the world in two simple parameters, and we've tried to come up with a parameter that we think matters for this new world. And that parameter is simply put, how many machines you can manage with a single human being. It drives innovation, it drives cost, it drives allocating very valuable, intelligent resources to do things that are closer to your customers rather than doing things inside the data center. The paradigm everybody's trying to drive to are the Google, Amazons, the Airbnb, the what apps, um, that are managing 20,000, 10,000 machines per single sysadmin. As compared to the typical companies today, AT&T, BT, uh, Lloyd's of London, et cetera, that are managing 200, 150, maybe 300 machines with a single person. That is a huge competitive advantage for those new guys on the left side of that chart. So, so how do you get there? You know, we think fundamentally companies have already done a couple things. We've all gone through the process of commoditization of hardware. That has happened. It's a race to the bottom. Silicon's becoming cheap, memory's becoming cheaper, disk is becoming cheaper, putting it together is becoming cheap, you know. HP went to Quanta, went to Acton, and on and on. That cost is getting driven down. But the reality, when you look at the total cost profile, it only impacts a small percentage of it. So what came next? Virtualization. Put much more in terms of workloads on any physical machine. Again, big improvement, ESX, KVM, Zen, but still only about a third improvement. When you look at the real value, and when you look at what a Google invests their time doing, it's automation, automation, automation. And that's where the money is really saved. That's where you can take all the remaining costs, the, all that operational cost. And that's why tooling, software automation, making OpenStack easy in simple terms is so important. Because you're not able to actually accomplish that. It's very cool technology that's very difficult. Very difficult technology is ultimately technology that sits very comfortably in a very dark, deep corner of the data center. When we're asked to contribute our perspective into customers that are wrestling with this competitive landscape, they're usually really coming to talk to us because we as a company really have just been born in the last 10 years around this cloud scale out automation world. So we're in many of the new clean sheet of paper companies as the operating system, as some of the tooling that have come together over the last years, from Netflix to Airbnb and Uber as examples. So what's the dilemma and promise of OpenStack? The promise is it's a piece of open source technology that allows you choice. I can pick this hardware with this software, put a bunch of VMs together, put a couple containers now with Magnum, and make it available in a cloud model. I can do it on-prem, so I don't have to be captive to the public cloud providers like Amazon or um, Azure, for example. But yet, I can team and work with them and decide to keep what's on-prem and what's off-prem. But there's also a dilemma, right? We build many, many snowflakes. Um, and this is some of the conversations that happened earlier this morning. How do we make OpenStack not so science project-y, right? And that's where this effort to simplify and automate is so important. Um, I think the biggest challenge we're seeing when I put my foundation hat on is how do we help customers who want to get into the mechanics of OpenStack? And we absolutely want them to be active contributors. But to be honest, most of the customers and partners in the world just want it to work, right? They don't want to have to hire 40 engineers just to make the platform work, right? They want to hire 40 engineers to write cool software to make the money, right? To make it easier to consume their services, to make it easier for you to find a plane when you're lost in an airport. 
those are, are value-adding activities. Um, and that's why I think our challenge is people that are interested in open to stack, people that are active in the foundation. I think our ultimate yardstick for success isn't all about adoption, while adoption is important. And certainly it's about features, but I don't think features are ultimately important. What I think are, is really the test we have to play to right now is, have we made it easy? Is it production ready? Are we making customers not run away screaming because it took them six months to get it standing? So how do we help and how we, do we think about it? First, we think it's really important to preserve choice because if you don't preserve choice in OpenStack, OpenStack just becomes a number, another name for an appliance and the difference is only that the software is a little cheaper because it's open source. So what's, we think one of the promises of OpenStack is the ability to mix and match things together. The question that we're trying to help the market answer is, do things fundamentally work when you mix and match them together? We've put together a, an OpenStack interoperability lab that allows you to combine multiple things. And at least working with us, you can say, oh, well, at least I know it works. So at the end of the day, we have 73 hardware configurations. We put together 175 uh, cloud configurations. We're running basically 3,000 clouds plus a month. We put them together, tear them apart, put them together, mix them up, um, and get to very big numbers in terms of number of deployments. Why, why is this relevant? Because we're exercising OpenStack and making people feel comfortable that they won't have to encounter problems that we've already encountered. Um, as Allison and as Monty talked about, it's really imperative for all of us that this tide rises and basically OpenStack is better for everybody because that's going to make it a viable option in a complex cloud world, which is the reality of the world we live in. So how we also do that is we look at this as a slight representation. We're using SDNs as an example, really poor and part of OpenStack, addressing a shortcoming in Neutron, and yet um, there's a lot of choice and a lot of innovation going on, which is good, but helping simplify that is equally important. So we look at multiple architectures, multiple hypervisors, containers, storage setups, network equipment, servers, and then what we've added recently is the ability to look at the major SDNs and put them into our simplification of OpenStack, which is represented by that graphical interface. And for those of you that have seen it, that is our service model, Juju. But what's really important here is what we do with our interoperability lab, which is mixing and matching these. So ultimately, if a customer comes to us and says, I want to deploy OpenStack with an SDN. What SDN do you recommend? Our answer is typically, why don't you test three or four and decide yourself? Because there's a lot of innovation in those six or seven, eight or nine SDNs, and you should evaluate which helps you most. People are hesitant to do that if each, each exercise takes 15 days. But they're happy to do it if they can run five clouds in a day and try one with one SDN, another with another SDN. And that's what we're trying to enable. And through enabling that, we enable choice. The other thing that we're doing is making the model a little bit more simple to understand as a distribution. We view the world very simply. Uh, there's you've been to the operating system, and that sits underneath a lot of OpenStack clouds where people are using all sorts of distributions of OpenStack itself. Then we have Ubuntu OpenStack, which is basically our operating system and our distribution of OpenStack, and those are customers that are using that. Canonical OpenStack is when somebody actually uses our operating system, our distribution of OpenStack, and the tooling, like the tooling I'm demoing as I speak. And then lastly, we think there is really a world where people need managed services from solution providers. Our place in the marketplace is what we call Bootstack with those customers, but we're also working hard to enable other people because we think it's really important that the market has the ability to buy OpenStack as a service, be it working with companies like Fairbanks or working with companies like Seesaw, both in the Netherlands. But that's a little snapshot of, I think, how the world works in general. Um, you're basically going to have operating systems, distros of OpenStack, OpenStack with tooling, OpenStack as a service. If we can make this model work in the marketplace, 
I think will raise the tide and it'll make OpenStack easier for everybody. The other thing um, is we're trying to figure out how we simplify it. And I'm going to use telecom as a little example, both for the challenge, as we were talking about earlier, that they have in terms of making sure OpenStack's easier and why it's important to them. But let's just check in. This will be a quick moment of truth to see things progressing. OK, in progress. OK, cool. Um, so telecom industry. They want to implement NFV, which is their equivalent to virtualization or cloudizing the industry. They have very legitimate business reasons. New competition, revenue pressure, people eating their lunch by consuming their product, which is the network, and paying very little for it, which is Netflix. How have they wanted to address this? For those of you that are in this space, they, you probably know this diagram. This is the Etsy NFV architecture. Simply put, every industry, I think, is going to come with some equivalent of this, which is how do you do on-premise cloud relevant to the workloads that are important to you. In this case, what's relevant is the VNFs, which are network functions deployed on an OpenStack cloud, be it a virtual machine or, or a container with physical assets underneath, OpenStack actually being the cloud manager. What we've added is a simple way to map a service model, in our case, Juju, to make it easy to deploy the VNF and OpenStack against a real business-oriented orchestrator. So in that case, for the telecom industry, there are products like Ericsson, like Amdocs, people that understand SLAs and how the network needs to operate. So when something breaks, where do you fail over? What should be the right SLA? What's the amount of pain you're willing to entertain? When do you have hit that pain threshold and you want to move things around? I think it's actually a very smart approach for an industry to deal with a very real problem for them, which is Google doesn't have any of this legacy. They woke up one morning and designed their network relative to their new set of services, and they're able to compete on you know, AT&T's network without any real legacy that they have to deal with. One of the ways we've tried to simplify this as well is working with Juniper on Contrail, but we're working with a number of the SDNs, as I mentioned, Plum Grid, et cetera, where we just try to put this in an architecture and bundle it together so things are easier to consumer. So not only automate it, but how do you give a uh, easier experience to actually consume OpenStack? And I don't mean consume it just from an engineering perspective. I mean, I'm a guy in a company, and I want to buy this. And I want what I buy to work. Who do I partner with? How do I make sure all the pieces are there? That sort of packaging, which is the same DNA we brought to packaging Ubuntu, um, is what we're bringing and trying to bring and planning to bring to OpenStack. So I'm going to bring in Chuba from Seesaw. And Seesaw is a solution provider in the Netherlands. And I thought, come on out. Um, hey. um, and we thought we'd talk a little bit about what he's doing, because I think it's really relevant, because we can talk about what's going on in the valley in China. But what's interesting is how do you move the ball here locally? And it's a combination of engineering effort, business strategy, and actually interacting with the customers that you guys all deal with every day in this region of Europe. Chebe, why don't you kind of outline a little bit of what you guys are doing? Yeah, so um, I'm Chebe. I'm one of the founders of CISO, and CISO is uh, quite an old company. We're active since 90, we're in business since 1997. So that's like, that one? Uh, yep. Like 18 years. Um, we deliver a lot of um, managed hosting services. We run more than uh, a million domain names, 100,000 websites. <laughs> Uh, we do a lot with still with VMware, and it, it's stable, but it's it's more or less provides you with the tools to run legacy applications. And uh, we think that the future is in cloud. So two years ago, we um, we decided we wanted to build a, an open cloud platform, and uh, and and we used OpenStack for that because we think it really drives innovation. And if if you're able to to follow the fast and rapid evolution of of the OpenStack project, you can really gain something. 
as for us, we're, we're only with 40 people, so um, we can import all the, 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 the all the R&D that's been done in, in, in the project. And also as a side effect, with OpenStack you learn what you need to do to automate orchestration and provisioning, because that's something that we as a company need to convert to. I need to convince my systems administrators that they need to learn a bit of Python, and that Puppet and Chef are cool tools. Mm -hmm. And OpenStack is really something that enables that as a platform. So um, two years ago, we, we started our journey, and um, we're, we're only launching today. We're mm. Today we're launching the, the, the final product, so it, it took some time to, um, to absorb the complexity. Yeah. And, and, and back then we didn't have autopilot to help us, so um, we've created soon, more soon. or less our own autopilot. Yeah. And I think it's not, that, it's not that difficult to create an open stack that's reliable and that you can run production on. It's, it's, it's been ready for, for production, I think, for more than a year. But it's, the difficult thing is how to keep up. Can you build an open stack environment that, that you can, will be able to upgrade every six months? Right. So right now we're, on, we're running on Kilo and we're already looking for liberty because features are added constantly, the world is changing, and we want to absorb that change in our platform. And, and I know you're working with us in terms of using our distribution of OpenStack that stays on that very rapid cycle. Yeah, how, how do you see the service that you're bringing to the Netherlands market? I mean, what actually are, beyond the technology, what are you going to introduce to the marketplace? Just an easy to use open cloud solution. Uh, we're, 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 we're just using, uh, we're stay as much as to the sources for the OpenStack project as possible. And uh, of course, it's, it's Dutch based. You, um, you can call us. Uh, we're, we're a very reachable company. Uh, but on the other hand, we, we, it, 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 it's enterprise grade. We, we, we use the engineers and technicians for C, from CISO to really have a very li a reliable platform for you. Good. And I know we have a, a bit of an yep. overview of your architecture. You want to walk through at a high level for everybody? Yeah, so this is a simplified. <laughs> A drawing of the of the architecture, and um, so what you can see is that the, the the really amazing amount of different services you need to run to get an OpenStack infrastructure up and running. So um, and, and 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 what you need to do to make it redundant. Uh, we don't want it to fail because there's there's one node failing. And um, so what what we started with is is building the the, the provisioning part that's that's below there. Um, if you go for OpenStack, it, you need to be able to scale fast. We need to be able to fully automatically deploy it, like with, with autopilot. So we use a whole bunch of open source uh, uh, projects to, to get there. And, and um, of course, we imported the existing Puppet modules that are within the OpenStack project. But we did create our own modules for having redundant database services, having three controller nodes that can take over each other. Um, uh, uh, making available our object uh, store based on Ceph uh, uh, and that kind of kind of stuff. Good. And you know, I wish I could say that we had an epiphany and we understood why you should create tooling and the importance. But it was actually through inter interaction like this with Seesaw where we realized simplifying it is important. Now, companies like Seesaw have done it themselves. Uh, some companies are looking for help. Some people are going to buy it as a service, right? But for all of us in this space of cloud and OpenStack and wanting OpenStack to be successful, to be honest, we don't care. As long as we're making that consumption easy through whatever model they choose to pick. Um, so I know we're kind of getting tight, so I'm going to do a couple things. One is you're having a launch party on the 25th. Yeah, so we, we launched our platform today. If you're interested in, in what we build or how we build it, or maybe interested in our services, um, talk to one of us uh, wearing the T-shirt. Visit us in the nice city of Alkmaar. You're, you're more than welcome. And um, we're also here at the, at the market to, uh, to explain uh, what we've done and maybe what we can do for you. Good. Thank you. And then, um, so our goal, as I said, is going beyond just simple automation, um, making it simple, driving choice. So moment of truth. We'll see if things have deployed. So I'm curious. Not quite completely, but in less than 20 or so minutes, we've got to 66%. I'll keep this laptop running, so by the time lunch is over, whoever wants to 
come by our booth and confirm that I wasn't doing blue smoke and mirrors. Um, it'll be up and running. You'll be able to go and see 10, 11 nodes running. Now, the other thing we've done is we've used this configuration of Juju, which is what's underlying autopilot to actually deploy OpenStack and an open contrail SDN. And not to dwell a lot, but this is actually sitting live in the lab. This, for those of you that have used the contrail Juniper SDN, this is actually the live uh, you know, portal management uh, view of the network. Uh, with a number of projects and dashboards. Oh, reloading page. Um, so let me wrap up and not keep everybody from lunch too long. Um, at the end of the day, we like to talk about making OpenStack dull. I think the biggest problem right now for OpenStack and all of us that want it to be broadly adopted, it's just a little too interesting. It's great as engineers. We love adding features. We love doing new technology, and I think that's why many of us are here. But at the end of the day, broad market adoption is going to be all about innovating at the workload, and everything underneath it hopefully just works. And that's what our goal should be with OpenStack. That's what we're trying to drive to, as Allison talked about. A real focus is going on in the foundation to have a more product-like experience, right? Um, so in uh, wrap-up, Thank you very much. I think you all in the Netherlands should take great pride in the amount of focus you're bringing that, and the innovation you're bringing uh, to this space. Um, we'll be around to talk, to show the demo if you're interested, but I'm happy to talk about anything from the foundation, the market in general, what we're doing as a company, as well as we have two other talks, one at 1350, one at 1555. We'll also do a little bit more demo on the tooling and talk a little bit of how OpenStack, uh, from our perspective, helps the service provider marketplace. Um, and I know I ran a little over, but happy to answer questions or talk over lunch. Thank you. Okay. Cheva, thank you very much.